Did you know that more people are bitten by other people than by rats in New York City every year? We don't know how to deal with our power struggles. We're not resolving them well. The divorce rate obviously is telling us we don't know how to resolve power struggles. And it's really critical for us to understand how to resolve power struggles in interpersonal relationships. Now, there are many kinds of power. There's physical power, economic power, social power, intellectual power, lots of kinds of power. But when it comes to interpersonal relationships, there are two main ways to be powerful. The first is control. Control means I'm going to make the other person do what I want. But the second is authority. And that means I'm going to inspire the other person to want what I want. This requires much greater interpersonal skill and authority with another person, which is to have power with them, not over them, is a much more powerful way to live. So if you find yourself in a power struggle with someone with which you have a close or intimate relationship, what you're probably thinking is, I just need that person to see it my way. What most of us try to do in power struggles is get the other person to agree with us. This is not the most powerful way to resolve power struggles because agreement is not as powerful as validation. Once you understand the difference between these two, you're going to resolve more power struggles. Agreement means trying to control the other person's thinking to make them think like what we think. This is not actually what you want. You just think you want agreement. What you really want is the other person to see it your way and value the way you see it. This is called validation. This is where you communicate to the other person, you know what, I do see your point, and I think you've got a good point. It has value to see it your way. That's validation. I just don't happen to agree with it. And when you communicate validation to the other person, they don't need to fight with you as much. All of a sudden, the conflict between the two of you goes away because what you both really want is not to be with someone who agrees with you all the time. Trust me, that would be boring. What you want is to be with someone who actually sees it differently than you do, but they value the way you see it. This is a much more powerful bond. Two people living together who see it differently, but they value the perspective of the other. This is how validation is more powerful than agreement. And once you enter into power struggles realizing this, what I really want is for them to value the way I see it, not really agree with me, and you try to do the same thing for the other person, the actual struggle between the two of you goes away. What we're all really looking for is to have authority with other people, which means inspiring from the inside to want to listen to us, not controlling them from the outside, making them listen to us. Authority, inspiring people from within, is always much more powerful than trying to control them for agreement. I'm delighted to be able to tell you that my book, Jesus the Greatest Therapist Who Ever Lived, is now approaching two million copies sold worldwide. This book is a psychological look about the teachings of Jesus. We all know his spiritual message, which is what he came to tell us about. But what most of us don't know is that embedded in his teachings are bits of psychological wisdom that are brilliant for how to conduct our emotional lives today. If you want to read more about the integration of psychology and the teachings of Jesus, you'll be able to get a copy and judge for yourself. Is he the greatest psychologist who ever lived? I think so.